What is up nerds, Crash here with the start of chapter 3 of my series, How to Make TF2 Maps, brought to you by tf2maps.net and essentials.tf. In this chapter, we're going to use our technical knowledge we learned in the first two chapters to create our first full map from scratch. We will be discussing gameplay theory, layout concepts, symmetry, and preparing our map for our first big release. By the end of this chapter, you should have a fully functioning alpha map and be prepared for your first playtest with live players. For this particular series, I'm going to be focusing on Koth gameplay, as we've already learned how to create this game mode, and it's a good place to start for newer mappers. Mind you though, that a lot of these concepts carry over to other game modes. At its core, a lot of what we'll be covering applies to all TF2 gameplay. And as always, if you run into any issues during this series, TF2Maps.net is the best place to head to regarding your problem. We're a friendly, active group, and there's plenty of people ready to assist you at just about any hour. In this episode, we're going to talk about gameplay theory. Now before I jump into it, I want to emphasize the second part of that topic. Theory. These concepts are not set in stone, and experimentation is a great thing. However, if you're watching this series, there's a good chance you don't have a whole lot of maps under your belt yet. So my recommendation to anyone starting out is to learn this theory and get the basics down before you jump the tracks and try to do your own thing. Probably the number one downfall I see with new mappers is overambition. Being excited and passionate is a great thing, but at the start, you kind of want to scale it back a bit. This honestly probably sounds kind of silly, but it's important to learn to crawl before you try running a marathon. Stick to a simple stock game mode and a simple stock theme. Get a good base level of knowledge down and your future projects will greatly benefit from it. I could not have made Probed, Trainsaw Laser, or Wub 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 without a bunch of standard maps behind me, providing that level of gameplay understanding needed to make them actually fun. Save those grandiose ideas for when you have enough understanding of what you're doing to do them some justice. One of the absolute most important things you have to keep in mind while creating your map is class balance. This means creating your map for every class in the game. As fun as it sounds to cater to your own personal main class, you need to take a step back, take off your player hat, and pull up your grown-up mapping pants because you will not be successful in your mapping endeavors if you disregard any class in your design. The number one goal is for everyone to have fun. This means not only making sure these classes aren't overpowered, but also have something to do. As an example for Sniper, sightlines aren't inherently bad, but they can be if you go overboard in distance or quantity. You don't want to make a map that is entirely close quarters, but you also don't want to make it huge and open with no way around major sightlines. Balance is key. Think about each class's strengths and weaknesses as you develop your map. Keep the jumping classes, scouts, soldiers, and demos in mind. Know that these classes will be able to get to places that your fat slow heavy won't be able to, and design accordingly. It's a good idea to get familiar with every class if you haven't already in-game. I'm a firm believer that a good mapper should be a pretty decent player. Having good game sense can really help when it comes to designing layouts and fun spaces to play on. The next big concept to keep in mind while developing is height variation. One of the biggest mistakes new mappers make is creating a big box and then filling it with buildings and props to create their map. This rarely works well and generally leads to most of your gameplay being on the same plane, which is just boring. Height variation is key to interesting gameplay. Players with a higher ground are generally going to have an advantage over players that are lower than them. Think about the direction players will be traveling out of their spawns heading towards the objective and what areas each team will have accessible to them doing so. And of course, keep in mind your jumping classes again as they'll have access to the areas from different places than the rest of the team. But again, as with class balance, you don't want to go overboard with height. Find a good middle ground. Most weapon damage has fall off the further away players are, so if you have too drastic of height, damage is reduced overall and your map's gameplay suffers for it. 192 and 256 hammer units are good heights to remember. 256 is also the highest you can walk off of without taking fall damage. If you jump at this height, you will actually take it. We'll cover scaling a bit further in a later episode, though. Another thing to keep in mind while designing your map is options. What choices are you presenting your players with as they explore your map? Unless you are specifically designing a choke point, which is something that generally needs to be handled very delicately, you want multiple routes for a player to take from any given area. However, as always, going overboard with these can lead to messy gameplay where the teams don't have any defined front line of combat. Another common new mapper mistake is to connect a big room with a hallway and connect it to another big room and then repeat. This is commonly called room corridor room syndrome in the mapping world. It's basically creating long choke points between large open spaces, which throws off player options as well as class balance. A really good thing to do is go in game and explore maps you want to take some influence from and see how they use these concepts. Nothing is wrong with taking ideas from other maps as long as you aren't blatantly plagiarizing. A lot of maps, especially from those just starting out, end up being a conglomeration of various maps the mapper likes. So to further explore some of these ideas, we're going to take a look at the layout of Viaduct. This map is a very popular Koth map with proven gameplay, and once I break things down on it, you'll begin to see a pattern that emerges in some other Koth maps as well. I call it the Viaduct formula. So first, we'll look around and see what Valve did to some of the gameplay space. We'll notice right as we spawn that we have two options to walk out of. This is to help reduce spawn camping so players aren't getting funneled out of the same door. 
coming out of spawn, we have a bit of height variation right off the bat, leading to three different options that take you to the next area. You'll notice a ton of height variation here, no matter which door you come out of. On the right side, there's this large ramp going up to a bit of a sniper deck. This area has quite a bit of height advantage, it's set far back, has lots of varying cover, on top of some pretty long sight lines. But the props are on the point, and the height difference directly behind the point provide enough cover that makes the sniper not able to cover all access to it. Now, Sniper is pretty powerful on this map, but there are plenty of counter sniping positions which helps balance it out. This top part also connects to this middle building, which provides even more height advantage in the area for the team pushing out from this side. The opposing team would have to come up through this building, which is a lot tighter and confined, making it harder to push. Moving down to the center point area, the point itself is on a hill, meaning that those at the top are more exposed, but have a slight height advantage over those coming up at them. This whole central area behaves very differently for each class. As a scout, I can jump over these rocks and barriers and navigate to nearly any point I want to get to. As a soldier or demo, I can take big leaps to get to the sniper perches or upper balconies. As a pyro, I am limited to the lower routes, but I can take advantage of a bit more cover to ambush and flank around, utilizing my skill set. Now looking at the top-down view of the map, I can point out what I feel makes it the viaduct formula. First we have our spawn room with two exits and an open courtyard. Three exits from here leading into another small courtyard which presents us with a few different options. We can take this side for a bit of a height advantage, or this side for a bit less height but more cover around us, albeit exposed to the opposing team's sniper perch. We have this central building here with routes going around it and some options inside it for height variation. Then we have another courtyard leading into a choke point central area with a bit of cover around it. Then it mirrors symmetrically from here. This general idea is what I call the viaduct formula. Spawn, courtyard, transition building, courtyard, transition building and route options, courtyard, central point. So let's look at some other maps that utilize this pattern. This is Koth Lakeside. Let's break it down again. Spawn room with a courtyard, three options to transition to the next area, another courtyard, a bit of height variation on the sides with a central building that provides more access to this height variation, courtyard, central point on top of a hill with cover around it. That's almost perfectly the viaduct formula. Now Lakeside is more unique in that it has this side building here that throws it off a bit, allowing the teams to flank around the point completely. This generally results in a bit more of a deathmatch heavy mid zone rather than the back and forth push of viaduct, but that's what makes Lakeside special. Moving on to one of my own that was included in the game, Koth Probed. We have our spawn rooms, our first courtyard, three options to the next area, one of which leading to some nice height that wraps around, a courtyard, a building that provides access to the point, routes around it leading to the central small courtyard, to the midpoint that's on a hill. Now my personal twist to the formula is the 90 degree angle I gave the map, rather than a straight shot like the others. I also have this building behind the point that I felt gave it some really interesting height variation to counter the ring going around the silo, plus of course the UFO. And last, another one of my maps that uses this formula is actually Koth Trainsaw Laser. Check it out. Spawn, Courtyard, Transition Building with 3 routes, Courtyard, Central Building with Height Routes, Small Courtyard, Central Point on a Raised Platform. So keep in mind that this is just one method that you can take. There are obviously other maps out there that drastically break this formula, such as Koth Nucleus. But personally, I feel the Viaduct formula is a pretty safe bet to keep in mind for an early project of yours. Maybe give the formula a shot with your project, or even just take some influence from it. Perhaps look at some other maps that you enjoy and see what they do with their layouts and think about why they work. Look at every part of the map from the perspective of each class and think about your options. Can you think of any other maps that follow this Viaduct formula, either stock or custom? Or can you think of any cool uses of height variation in other maps? Let me know some of your opinions and ideas in the comments below.